Hello everyone, this is Margaret Manning with 60 and Me. This is the place where women over 60 come to be inspired. And one of the things that we love to do is travel. And my guest tonight is Evelyn Hannon. She runs a website called journeywoman.com. I have been a huge fan for years. Uh, she has been, her, her company has been promoted on all kinds of media from People Magazine to uh, New York Times. And she's been interviewed by the BBC and, um, you know, lots and lots of different people. But most of all, Evelyn has a following of women around this world who respect her and love her for her travel exploits. So welcome, Evelyn. I'm really glad to have you here tonight. Thank you. It is such a pleasure, especially to be in the 60 community or 60 plus community. Are you feeling comfortable with us here? Absolutely. I'm right where I should be. Wonderful. So thank you. Thank you for inviting me. My community is, as you know, made up of about 30,000 women now over 60. About 99% of us are over the age of 60. So we've got a very focused uh, interest in, in living mm -hmm. our life to the full. So mm -hmm. um, I know you are over 60, um, but tell us about how you got this travel bug, how you got started with this website and, um, you know, what motivated you? Okay. Well, it actually was a sad beginning. When I look back at it now, um, I can only smile because it was where I should have been. But it started in 1982. The, the whole mm, story started or journey started in 1982 in a bottle green Volvo, uh, driving with my then husband. And it was on that journey that we decided to part company. So I was 42 years old. I had met him when I was 14 years old. So you can imagine, um, it was a decision that we both were making. But oh my God, I lay down on the floor and I said, oh, I can't breathe. And I think I was on the floor for easily a month. But then I got up and I said, I can't stay here. I don't think I want to stay at home baking chocolate cakes. That's just not my style. So I'm going to go out. I need to go out and discover who I am. And it'll probably be painful. So I gave myself a challenge. I said, self, if you can go out in the world for 35 days and not die, then that'll probably be the mandate for the rest of your life. And so that's what I did. I went out. I traveled for 35 days. I cried for 35 days. I came home and I said, I know this is what I need to continue doing. And so it's been going. I'm 73 now. It's been going for a lot of years. And I think the very big thing was that when I tried to get help for this journey, I had no mentors. Women generally were not traveling by themselves. So I had to make it up as I went along. And a lot of it was painful. And that's why I said, I'm going to keep notes. And one day I'm going to be able to hold the hand of other women who want to go out there and who perhaps aren't ready to do it yet. Actually, that was that question. You've answered a second question I was going to ask you, which is, you know, why did you start a site that was dedicated to women only? Um, and I think you've explained that. And one thing I was going to ask you to your comments on was what you think the qualities are of a, of, a, of a good traveler. I mean, what does a woman, what skills does a woman need to develop to become a good traveler? What a good question. Mm. Um, I think she has to have courage, but not the kind of courage where you go out to shoot bears. I think it's the kind of courage that tells you that you're going to be able to do it. Not anything that terrible is going to happen to you that you won't be able to fix it. And the courage to understand that you will get better at it all the time. And, I mean, I could keep on going and going. I think you have to be able to go out into the world and understand that everybody is not like you. And, uh, and that should be the exciting part, that you want to learn and accept the way they are and be able to communicate with them and tell them who you are. 
Now, you, you traveled all over the world, and as I said earlier, when we started, I've actually been a follower of your site. I've been taking notes, you know, for years, so I, I followed some of your journeys um, on, on Twitter and, and Facebook. And, you know, I, I get the sense that every place you go, you learn something from, from the culture that, you, that you've uh, visited. Can you tell us about a couple of um, places that you went that, where something happened with either extraordinary women that you met or other people that changed your mind about yourself and about your world? Oh, my goodness, Margaret, I think these are incredible questions. And okay, let me okay. see what I <laughs> Making you think. I don't mean to put you on the spot. It's just I, I want to understand no, your, no, your no, experience. These are, they are wonderful interview questions, far different than anybody ever asks me. Oh, good. So I love it. Good. Okay, let me, uh, I'm thinking about one that uh, taught me I was a good mime. Let's put it that way, that you can always make yourself understood. I was in China. And the only Caucasian in Xi'an. I was there with my younger daughter who had come there to receive her little baby. And uh, that little baby, of course, she was 13 months old. And we were, oh my goodness, we were so, so different to her that she kept her little mouth closed. She was not going to eat at all. And so I said to my daughter, I'm going out into the city. I'm going to follow some women. And I'm going to try and find out what little babies eat in, in China. That's what I did. I went into a grocery store. And I remember everybody stopping in their tracks because, really, I look so different. And everybody, everybody there uh, was a woman. And I began doing this. I don't know if you can see it, just rocking. And, you know, they formed the circle around me and cha-cha-cha. What the heck is she doing? And then I took, I pretended to be holding a bowl and a spoon. And they chatter, 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 chatter. And then all of a sudden, one of the women took me by the hand and took me to the back of this tiny little grocery store. And there on the, on the shelf were uh, jars of Heinz or Gerber's baby food, which is what we have in North America, but they had Chinese labels on it. And I brought those and, you know, everybody clapped when I said, oh, yes, oh, yes. And I brought that home. And that was my little granddaughter's first food that she ate. It was peaches in a jar. She's 13 years old now. When she comes to visit grandma, there is always a jar of baby peaches for her. <laughs> That's a great story. Do you know, I, I remember you actually told a story about being a grandmother. I think I'd asked a question on the community and you responded to it. But it sounds like you can be pretty wacky at times. I hope. A... I hope. Uh, I, I think in, in most cases, probably getting older gives you a little more, I don't know. I don't care. I don't care. I am who I am. Of course, I'm not going to be outrageous because that's not my personality. But I will be outrageous. How does travel change when you get to be over 60? I mean, what, what kinds of things, um, you know, do you think are better to experience when you're older than perhaps when you're younger? Where would you direct people if they wanted some ideas of travel places? Okay. Um, what is better? I think everything is better. Um, my stamina is not the same as it was 30 years ago. But I think... Uh, my ability to recognize the fact that my stamina is not as great. So that's fine. Uh, in terms of being shy, I'm no longer shy. Mm -hmm. If I need to pantomime, I'll pantomime. If there are people around me watching, so what? That's cool. And I'm not, I'm not afraid of walking up to someone and holding their hand. Just going to hold their hand and ask them a question. Even if I'm speaking in English and they're speaking Russian. Because in a little way, me holding their hand sets the tone, sets the message, and we communicate. You know, I think you've, you've used a word indirectly that I really feel strongly about in our community, and that's connecting. That these women, all my women over 60, they, we seem to have a natural ability to connect with each other. And a, a, a desire to do that, to help each other and have each other's backs. You have a community of around 60,000 women who receive your newsletter every, every month. 
And I, you know, I think that this ability to connect is something innate in, in a community of women. So what, how do you feed off of those uh, women and how do you nourish them? What's, what do you see as, as your role in that in, as a community leader? To me, it's we all need each other. Mm. I, I always say I have 10 pieces of advice, but if you each give me one of yours, we have 65,000 pieces of advice. And that's really the premise that Journey Woman was built on from the very beginning. Every month, people send me their best travel tips. And every month, I glean from that the 12 best and send them out in our, our newsletter is completely free. It's my, it's something that's so close to my heart. It's a pleasure for me to work on it. And I take those 12 tips and send them out to the 65,000 women and say to them again, now remember, I need you. Without you, there is no network. And women are natural, as you said, we're natural communicators. From the time we're small, we've been sharing we don't share the same way as the guys do. They share, but ours is really extra special. And I think it's really easy anytime. And I noticed that on your community as well, just put one thought up there and everybody is so willing to, to pop by and, and tell, tell us what they think as well. And that's the absolute pleasure for me. Yeah, we've had, um, we have a different kind of community in the sense that we're not focused on just one thing like travel. You know, we're trying to think about health and, and independence and uh, financial security. So it's a bit broader. But I mean, I've asked a question like just a few days ago, um, if you could, uh, you know, give one piece of advice to your 18 year old self, you know, what would it be? And um, it was really remarkable how, um, you know, open people were, how, how um, raw some of it was and how much we carry with us, you know, through our lives. It's very amazing. But I guess I'd like to ask you that question. You know, if you can remember back to 18 and where you were and knowing what you know now, what would you say to, to Evelyn, 18 years old? Well, I'm going to tell you what I told to my daughters when they were 18 years old. And that was, um, you won't be who you really are until you're 30. You're going to be changing every year. The values that you have now are going to be added to and added to and added to. And gradually, you'll be a different woman. And have lots of friends, have lots of boyfriends. but Try not to choose and make your really big husband, wife, partner decision until you're close to 30. And mm -hmm. you'll know then exactly what you want in another person. And they listened. And they did. Good. But that's so yes. funny. One of the, several of the women just said the advice would be don't marry that guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. just take your well, time. And I think that's it. So, you know, let's go back to travel because, I, I mean, it's wonderful to know kind of how you approach travel. But um, you've had some wild adventures. Um, what would you say um, was, well, it's not your most exciting adventure, but the one that surprised you the most, the one that changed your mind about the place? Well, maybe, maybe it's the one I just came back from. I was, I have been to Russia three times. And the first two times I was there, I was there only for a day or two. And my heritage is Russian. My grandparents on both sides are Russian. And I thought, when I get there, I'm really going to feel it. I'm going to connect with the people. It's going to make my heart absolutely swell. And I got there, and I didn't like it, and I didn't like the people. And everybody was seemed to me quite dour. Nobody, nobody chatted. And I left really totally disappointed thinking, I'm not going there again. And yet, uh, I was invited by, uh, by Grand Circle to come and take a cruise, which meant I would be in Russia for two weeks. And I would get a chance to meet with the staff on the on the riverboat. But I would also get a chance to go out and um, visit a school and chat to older women uh, through an interpreter. And I came back. Yes, my heart just swelled. 
it was incredible to make those personal connections and to understand a little bit more what the country has gone through, what the people are going through, and the, the progress that they've made. And I just loved it there. It taught me so much about the people. Yeah, I could sense that in your follow-up. And, you know, coincidentally, I actually have been to Russia several times because my son married a beautiful Russian woman. And uh, so I had the opportunity to go many times. He lived there for five years. So, uh -huh. And I, like you, uh, at first as a traveler, and then when you meet the people, and this is true of any travel situation, I think, you, you, just, you just attach yourself at a different, uh, a different level. But you, you did raise right. an, issue, an issue about river uh, cruising, which I wanted to, at some point in this chat, talk to you about, because so many people are doing it now. And uh -huh. um, it seems a big trend. Um, what was your experience of that, of that way of travel, that slower river cruise um, experience? Yeah, beautiful. Uh, I think I'm a Pisces. I love the water. I love to be on the water. And I also, with my first major cruise, I was so excited because... I thought to myself, I'm using the same waterways as Christopher Columbus used, or I, this is the way the explorers really traveled. And, uh, and so that's what I loved about being on the ocean. I Actually, if we go back a little bit, in 2008, I was on a small cruise ship with 750 students and 50 professors. It was called Semester at Sea. And we were on the water for 108 days. And it was gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous, as we made, we circumnavigated the globe. But let me get to the, let me get to the riverboat, because the riverboat is a very gentle mode of travel. I think um, as we are in our 60s and I in my 70s, um, not as easy to pack, unpack, get onto a train, tr fly to another destination. Um, river, river boat travel is so gentle and, uh, and quite gracious. And I really enjoyed it. And so it gives you the opportunity. Um, in my case, the last one I was in St. Petersburg. I had four days of guided touring by the guides that were right on the ship so I could ask them any questions I wanted. And then together we started going down the river through the lakes and they were always there to offer us any information we needed. Meals were lovely. We learned to enjoy Russian cuisine. I can't, and you never have to pack more than, or unpack more than once. No, it sounds, it sounds great. It really does. It's on my list now of places, of ways to travel. I've never done it. So I'm not much of a yeah. cruiser either. So I think I've got a whole new world to explore there. So. So um, a question about traveling alone. I don't know whether I, you were with a group, but um, a lot of people, a lot of women are concerned about travel, um, you know, especially given some of the, you know, the exposure to news recently. Um, and, I, and I know you have a point of view on this. Um, could you share with us what you think about, you know, what a woman who's traveling alone should think about and um, how much you think she should worry? Right. Well, I think... Hmm. I think you should be traveling solo if you can. Uh, traveling solo doesn't mean traveling all by yourself. You can be traveling with another girlfriend. You can be traveling within a group. But you're going out there. You're going out into the world by yourself. And to me, I always say research, research, research. That's the most important thing. Find out what you need to know, even about safety issues, before you leave. I mean, that's one of the things I have to say. I never really talk a lot about Journey Woman, but that's what I do on Journey Woman. I offer safety tips. I try to teach women what is important to have with you, what to be aware of, whether to carry a small whistle with you, whether to leave a note in your hotel room if you're going to be meeting somebody. Leave a little note in your hotel room saying, this is who I'm going to meet, and this is where I'm going to meet them. You know, those are the kinds of things you want so that in case there is a problem, I make the concierge my best friend. Before I go anywhere, I ask, is it safe to go there? 
can I go there in the evening? Most cases, I have to say, since I've been younger, because I started traveling in my 50s, I don't really go out in the evening. That doesn't make me a timid person. In a little way, it makes me a very clever person. I love to go to the markets at lunch. I pick out all the things I need to have for my, for my dinner. I spread a little tablecloth on my bed. I have a gorgeous picnic with wine, with cheese, with fruit, whatever it is. Go to bed early so I'm up early in the morning. But I'm not out where I don't know the lay of the land. I can give you a thousand. You don't want a thousand tips from me, but I can say to other women, please come to the website. Please read those tips. Educate yourself. Don't, don't try to be a hero. And, and also remember that you're going to be lonely. And don't worry about it if you're going to be lonely. Everybody is lonely when they're out there. So you might be lonely for a day or two, and then you'll have this great encounter with somebody. You'll be perfectly fine afterwards. It'll change everything. You know, you have um, a service on your website called Hermail, um, yes. which is, um, if I understand it, it's a way of connecting women around the world so that if you're traveling to a place that you're not familiar with, you can contact someone in advance and perhaps meet them for coffee and all, all women within the, the you know, journey woman community. Is, if you, have I got that right? Because it sounds like a great you idea. Have it absolutely right. I, uh, I started this a long time ago because a lot of my journalist friends uh, say would be going off to London or to Paris and say to me, do you know any women there, people that I can chat with, people who can give me advice? And I always knew somebody there. And then I began to think about it. And I said, you know, our network can be doing the same thing for each other. So I developed this little uh, way of people connecting. It's very safe uh, because you, you don't tell people who you are. You just ask for a mentor. So I would go online and say, I'd like to meet a mentor in London. And if there is someone there, someone who has signed on to be a mentor, I will get their email address or I will get a place where I can write in to them. And I'd say, is it going to be cold there? Are you expecting rain? Uh, can you tell me where I can eat so I won't feel totally alone? And some incredible friendships have formed. So Just you don't have to meet. You can yeah. Yeah. Just using no. that little way. And I still say cyberspace is imperfect. So I can never vouch for the person who's on the other end who has said, yes, I'm a mentor. Because it may not be a woman at all. I always say that. Be really careful. Don't give them a lot, a lot of personal information. And always meet in a place that is crowded. And if you don't like the vibe, you just leave. No, in fact, we've um, done the very same thing on the 60 and Me uh, forum because we've just started a conversation forum. And we say, you know, please don't make any assumptions that who you're speaking to is what their picture shows. And uh, it's exactly. kind of sad that we have to think that way. But I think that is a wise traveler. And um, it's a good thing to be, you know, thinking in advance. Even for my little granddaughters, I'm always saying to them, be really careful just because someone pretends to be your friend on the internet Absolutely. right anyway but th but i think the solo travel for me i i love traveling by myself because it sort of stimulates my it, my own growth it just helps me to you know look back and look forward and and find those connections but you know i was going to comment as you were talking you're a very good uh writer i mean you're very evocative uh, did you have a background in writing by any chance because you know you just seem to pull the heart of things out of a conversation Oh, nice. That's a lovely thing to tell me. Thank you. Um, I had a grade nine teacher who made such a fuss about me. Uh, and I shouldn't say about me, but about my writing. She gave me incredible confidence. And throughout, you know, this isn't my, my first career. I've done many other things leading up to this, but through it all, I've always kept diaries. I've always, I've always written, but I don't have any formal training. Well, it's you're a just, beautiful writer. I, I think it comes from deep down inside. It shows. And not 
See, when you're over 60, you're not afraid of going deep down inside and putting it out there because so what? And that's why I think travel over 60 can be even more powerful because it's not like it's not that you're looking for yourself anymore. You're like you said, you are you. You are your authentic self. What you see is what you get. And then you can just focus on the deeper issues. So Evelyn, you are a great writer. I really love your writing style. And, and I understand that you actually are a contributor to another, another blog. Uh, tell us about that. Okay. Um, my daughter is probably the young version of who you are. Okay. She's working with uh, younger women, about 30 women, all bloggers on the same website. That's called yummymummyclub.ca. And they're talking about issues being a young woman and being young mothers. And she asked me whether I would be the resident grandmother. And I said, <laughs> oh, it will be my pleasure to be, to be the, the blogger. I, I'm the supposedly the words of wisdom, but the, the other young women laugh at me because really <laughs> my blog is called Aging Disgracefully. And I talk about all the, the all the trouble that I get into and all the fun things that I'm up to. Uh, and, uh, you know, more and more, that's becoming my real love. Uh, being, able to, being able to communicate with women of my own age, although I think in uh, my, my community is made up of older women, my travel community, more and more, we're, we're getting to the the older side so I can do that for myself and then speak to the younger women about being an older woman. You know it's actually really funny you should mention that though because I do think that older women are an inspiration to younger women um, yes. because I mean when I started when I told people at work that I was 60 that was a big coming out for me because in your work environment you always want to be seen as being young and um, since then, they come to me, ask questions. And in fact, someone said the other day, I'm so glad that you told us this because I now know that what it can be like to be 60 is fun and upbeat and quirky and all those things that you are too, you know, just that we don't take life too seriously, but we've been there. And, yes. you know, I, just the fact that we've lived six decades of experience. And some of those decades were pretty crazy, you know, the, we tried things, exactly. we were, you know, we weren't afraid and um, we've got that in our DNA. So I think young women have, uh, you know, a respect for that. So I'm, I'm so glad you do that. That's very cool. I'll it's check it's it. lovely. I consider it if, if many times they'll say, oh, you're my role model. And believe me, that makes my heart feel so good. It has nothing to do with ego, <laughs> but rather let me show you what what happens along the way and how each decade for me anyway I can say gets better for very different reason but with each 10 years I learn new things I am a new person it's quite wonderful no it's amazing and you know something that you've raised which is super important too is the power of community um, on social networking and on on uh, Facebook and yes. I, I have to remind the community or share them the story about your lost luggage, which started a, <laughs> a, a furor online. And you had, uh, I think, Air Canada, it was, you know, sort of yes. uh, on their toes. But it was just, again, the power of asking for help, asking people to give you a hand. And it was a rem remarkable response. Can you tell us about that? It was, yes, it was incredible. I came home from the Antarctic um, and my suitcase just never arrived and I had taken I just had this crazy feeling about it I had so much I don't usually travel with a big suitcase but I had lots of expedition clothes and I was nervous I had to change a few a few times I had to change planes a few times and I took a photograph of my um, of my orange journey woman bag and that bag didn't arrive. It just didn't arrive. And I thought, ah, it's Air Canada. It'll be here in two days. It'll be here in three days. But one week, two weeks, three weeks went by. And I thought, oh, I, I just, I don't have a lot of things. I have very special things. And so I thought, oh, I'm going to have to lose them. And I created a website. Uh, no, I created a Facebook page right. called Air Canada, give Journey Woman her bag back. And 
500 people joined my community. <laughs> I was one. And they made Air Canada's life miserable. But poor Air Canada, they couldn't find the bag. They just couldn't find the bag. But I had some shawls in there that I absolutely loved. So I went online and I connected with the people that had helped me buy those shawls in India. And everybody in India was out looking for a shawl. And then another woman in the United States caught me by such surprise because she sent me via Facebook a message that said, Evelyn, I don't know you and you don't know me, but I'm one of your readers. And I want you to look at this link because this is for you. And I went to look at it and it was a gorgeous pashmina, which she sent to me. And I said, oh, my God, you can't. I can't accept this. Let me pay for it. You found it. And she said, no, I can't let you do that. I want you give such pleasure to everybody else. I'm now going to give it to you. This is actually the best part of the story. Days later, <laughs> on a Friday night, the phone rang. 9.45 at night, I picked up the phone, and it was a gentleman who said, hello, this is Air Canada. He was completely casual about it. He said, I'd like to deliver your bag. And I began to shriek, my bag, my, my orange bag. And he said, yes, your orange bag. And uh, he delivered it the next day, and everything was in it. Well, now I'm feeling doubly guilty about all the people who helped me and the woman who bought me a shawl. So while I was in Russia, I bought a shawl for her and I did the same thing on her Facebook page. I said, oh, and I wrote a blog and I told her to go and read the blog and there was a picture of the shawl and I called us shawl sisters. And I'm sure we'll have a connection forever now. And that's what women's oh, communities that are is like. such. And thank you, Air Canada. <laughs> That is such a cool story, I, and I, I love it. I mean, and, and again, that desire for women to just help each other, we just get it. We know the little things that will make it all better, but um, that's a that's super, right. that's a great and story. And very few men, yeah. and uh, this is not dissing men at all, but very few men join that discussion because it's not what they do, but it is what women do. And <laughs> oh, so I love it. together we conquered the world. <laughs> Well, you know, I am so excited to share this uh, conversation with the 60 and Me community because I really think that you've got so many, you know, jewels and secrets to share and, and vice versa. Um, you'll love our community. They are fabulous women. And so I, we're going to put I the website to... up. It's journeywoman.com. That's right. It's fabulous. And I, I pop into your Facebook page every so often and I am absolutely amazed at how many people are joining the conversation it's not 10 it's not 20 it's not 50 it's hundreds I know. it's amazing that means you're doing something so so right margaret thank congratulations. you thank you well there is there like you described earlier it's them that is giving back we nourish each other and um i'm i think that the time is right and i think that i've said it um on a little podcast i did way at the beginning with which is this is our time you yes. know, we are creating um, a, a, a decade or two of life that didn't really exist in our experience before. We're strong, That's we're right. healthy, we're curious, uh, all the things that you are beautifully, you know, 70 year, plus years old, and you are still going strong. But, but what's next? What's the next journey? What's next? Yeah. Um, I, last week, I said to myself, self, <laughs> um, I really don't know how to take photographs. Everybody tells me my photographs are lovely, which I so appreciate. Um, and I'm taking them just with a tiny camera and loving every minute. I can't, I'm leaving for Newfoundland tomorrow morning, and I said my camera and I are so excited to leave uh, and, to, and to be able to capture those images. And I realize what I'm doing is really photojournalism. It's not taking fancy, wonderful pictures, but... It's capturing the spirit of a place and, and introducing the people. So I'm starting to look for some place that I can go to school for three months, and it's got to be outside of Canada. And I want to study a little bit more, even with my little camera, uh, how to be a better photojournalist. Wow. 
So that's my next adventure. So I hope you have a wonderful time on your, your film journey. I hope that you learn lots of great tips for photographs and I'd love to, I'll be looking for them online. Thank you. Thank okay. you very much. And it was so lovely to chat with you. Thank We're you. going to have to do this again. I think so. It's been such a pleasure having you with us and I'm sure the community is going to love hearing all your adventures and, and following you on a Journey Woman. Thanks again so much and uh, take good care of yourself. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.